benefits of being offended. Man, I can name a whole lot, Mr. Schmidt, Mr. Matt. <laughs> Most people get their uh, their butt hurt real easy today. You know, if you say something that is offensive to one person, it's not offensive to another person. And if the ones that's offended causes all the the big problem, oh, you offended me. I'm so upset that you said whatever. It's uh, in my opinion, I don't think we can grow as humans without being offended. You know, if you don't like being offended, that probably probably means that you don't like examining what you think. It means that you've been told something, but you don't really have any real conviction of why you think or why you believe it. That's why it rubs you so hard. That's why you get offended because you don't really know or understand your own position. And for you to get offended and to look past that, you have to go back into inside yourself and understand your own points. Well, I think today in our world is everybody is getting easily offended about anything and everything. You can't post something on Facebook. You can't say this. You can't do this. Everybody else gets hurt. But the person that says it, they probably won't get hurt. They probably just that's how I felt and I wanted to say it, but everybody else gets easily upset, you know, and they take it out and they're like, oh, you're a bully because you offended that person. I was like, no, I'm not. I'm just calling it what it is, but everybody well, else is. There's so. a distinct difference between bullying and offending people. Yeah. Those are two totally different things. And, and I think people miscategorize by calling someone a bully when in fact they were just stating their own position whether it was based in fact or fiction and you know if somebody if something is offensive to you uh, there's some type of youtube channel or some type of uh, movie or show or book or some group that's offensive to you you don't have to pay attention to them not unless they're invading your house or, you know, causing some mayhem that's a direct threat to you. But you don't have to listen to them. Or instead of canceling them out and not listening to what they have to say, you could listen to what they have to say, get past your own being offended and actually see where they're coming at with their points and see if you can come up with equal or better points to use against them or for them and actually have a discussion and debate about it. Even if it's a one-sided debate with somebody on a YouTube channel that you can just think about their arguments in your head and say, well, this is why I don't agree with them. It offends me and I don't like listening to what they have to say, but I also think that they have the right to say whatever they want to say, and I do too, so I should look at what they have to say and see where we differ and see if we can even find some middle ground. And if we can't find middle ground, that's fine too, but at least examine each position and give them both the time of day to understand both positions. Yeah, you know, if you have an interest in something and somebody is against you in that position, you might want to just look at it because people are afraid to think that they're wrong. Yeah. They're, no, oh God, I'm thinking this way and you're telling me this other thing. And if I get convinced that I'm wrong, then, oh God, I don't like to think of myself as being wrong. Well, I mean, if, if somebody says something that's offensive, I, I wish someone would say, well, why does it offend you? And it's like, well, I don't want to talk about it. They just they automatically get upset and they take off. That's it. No, let's, let's sit down talk about it. Why does this offend you? And have both valid points and see what you can't like you just said. Like the F word. I don't know why people get offended by that. Like, I really have no clue. It's a sound and it's a perfect word to be used in about every situation. Actually, you can use it for every word for almost in a complete sentence. It's a it's noun, personal. verb. It's a, I mean, I, I, do, I just don't understand. I mean, I, it's like with any word, if you overuse it, it seems like your vocabulary is really limited. But I still don't understand why you're being, why people are offended by it. it it's always struck me as something rather odd. But. Is it, uh, you know, is it offensive when you start talking about the taboo subjects of politics and religion? You know, people instantly shut off. They, they're like, it's so offensive to say, you know, Catholics are better than Episcopalian or Episcopalians better than a Methodist or, you know, the list can go on and, oh, you can't go to heaven unless you uh, speak tongues because you're a, uh, it's all craziness. Everybody is so offended by every little bitty thing. 
and nobody can even talk about any issue. A lot of that, especially with religion, I find that it's so deeply ingrained in them from childhood and where they live, just their whole societal structure is that they can't even contemplate the idea. They have this cognitive dissonance that they can't hold these ideas. They can't hold either of the ideas. So they just go with the middle ground of, I can't hold either. This is what I was brought up with. And this is where I'm going to stay because I can't really contemplate being right or wrong. I mean, when I think about religion, I think of the huge scope of earth and how many people have lived on earth. And to think that you and your little group and your little book has discovered the right way, it just <laughs> seems ridiculous. There's thousands of societies and cultures out there and almost all of them have something they believe in. So to think that you're right and everybody else is wrong, no matter what you believe in, or if you think two or three things are right, it just, you don't take into account how large the world is that we live in. And that's not just brought forward by technology. That just makes it more present. But when Cortez went to Mesoamerica, he had to be shocked that there wasn't just this group of gods from the Aztecs. There was the Olmecs and all kind of other peoples that had their own gods. Yeah. And, and maybe their gods were all the same. Uh, who knows? In that <laughs> you, you all pray to the sun god and my sun god can't be different from your sun god because the sun is the same but maybe it has a different meaning to you well, and, and that, sun gods. Yeah, but that would be very offensive to a lot of people I, I have friends and family that if you bring up religion and if it's anything other than uh, Christianity then you are an outcast like you, you just better hush your damn mouth, boy. You because know where you're at. Them. Yeah, you know where we're at. We're in, we're in the south. We're in Texas, boy. You better shut up. <laughs> I mean, that's just funny. It's just funny. But how do you grow as a person? Yeah, I just think when we were kids, seems like these kids get offended really easy. And when me and you were growing up together, man, if you were offended by something, it was. You better get over it right now. Right now. Like yeah. right now. You're you're fed. You better go ahead and get that yeah. out right now. Yeah, brush it off. You know, me and uh, my son Taylor were talking yesterday. We were talking about, you know, at a point where I'm the one, I'm the parent. I'm going to, you know, give everything to you. I'm going to tell you, you know, we go to church. This is what we do. This is what we do. After a certain period of time, you, you're going to grow up and you're going to do your own research and you're going to go look and see what's good for you and what's believed. Now, I'm, you know, you hope so. I hope I do. And but at the same time, you know, me teaching him everything I was raised up on is what he had when he was young. Now he's old enough to branch out and see um, what religion, what makes him happy, what he needs to do, what offends him. And, you know, we talked about some of the things yesterday that, you know, what would you do in a situation uh and he would be like i'd talk to him you know and talk to somebody and i think communication yeah, yeah be, being offended is something like i'm offended by people not uh defending someone who can't physically defend themselves instead they pull out their phones mm. and start videoing it see that is offensive to me uh, but it's not offensive to the uh well, I just label them because that's what I am doing now. They're just a, a little wuss. They're just these little bitty bags of flesh that are practically useless. When you see someone who is getting beat up by a mugger or somebody wants this old lady's purse, and your first reaction is to pull out your phone to video it, like that is astonishing to me and, and crazily offensive. And I think it's offensive in a good way because it would allow me to not only help the lady if I was there, then I could also help that person by offending them by a good, nice bitch slap. Yeah, you know, a very I've been <laughs> several times. You know, a very offensive topic is guns, but if guns were as prevalent as cell phones, and you saw somebody getting mugged, instead of pulling out your cell phone, you pulled out your handy dandy gun. It seems like it would be a much better place. Well, that's what happened. I mean, 
not too long ago in a mall, you know, somebody gunman came in shooting up a mall, a kid, 20 something years old, had, uh, had his, uh, concealed hand gear, uh, handgun permit and pulled it and shot him in the chest three times center mass, you know, things like that. So. It's, it's kind of an interesting, uh, you know, the whole gun debate is probably really offensive to a lot of people. Very offensive. I mean, very, very offensive. And it boils down to w without the right to keep and bear arms, which we should not have that right from any person or government anywhere. Not only is it the right to go hunting if you want to, it is more importantly, the right to protect yourself and your home and your property and from a tyrannical government if that ever became necessary. Even though that would be very difficult, let's say in the United States, for example, uh, you have martial law in the United States military on the ground here, it'd be really, really tough for you know a band of guys to get together with their with their rifles. Yeah. It would be tough, uh, not impossible, but it would probably be tough. But that is the it's for self protection. It's to protect you from an intruder coming into your home or a tyrannical government. Uh, I was in New York City mm, twenty some odd years ago, and I happened to be a uh, a witness to something in court where this lady, she had an intruder coming to her apartment. The husband, instead of defending his wife, he took off and ran into the closet and the wife grabbed a lamp and was able to hit the burglar with the lamp. Instead of the burglar getting in trouble, it was the lady who beat up the burglar. Mm -hmm. And that was offensive to me. And I don't think that that's the kind of offense that emboldens people instead of uh, you know, the, the offenses that we have, we can either grow and we learn from them and we learn from other people's stance. We learn why they're wrong or why they might be right. And there are certain circumstances where if a young girl is beating up a burglar, breaking into her house under the... Uh, assumption she's about to be physically assaulted because you've got a guy coming in into your house that's offensive in an emboldening way like we got to make sure laws are not such that a girl can't protect herself by hitting a burglar in the head with a lamp that that's offensive uh, and i was happy to be offended by that see there's good points to be offended by yeah there's nothing wrong with being offended Again, it makes you see your own points and work out in your mind what's right for you and what's not right for you. That's exactly right. And I think without being offended, we are, uh, we, we force ourselves to not be elastic. We have to be able to stretch ourselves, just like me and you like to physically stretch. If you're not stretching your mind, then you're becoming stagnant, hard, unflexible, and not able or even willing to see other people's points of view and it's kind of like traveling you know we've all three been around the world and what what are some of the first things people closest to us will say oh y'all be careful you know it's dangerous outside of the united states yeah and i'm like oh god people i mean <laughs> it's more dangerous here when i went you know funny you say that when i went to uh live in abu dhabi uh, it was the most safest, secure place I've ever been. The cops don't even carry guns. You know, there, there's nothing there to be offended. Of course, you don't steal because of capital punishment and everything. And I think that's why they, everybody thinks it's so unsafe because they'll cut your hand off. Well, yeah, don't steal. Don't do anything to offend anyone. <laughs> and, offend, and, and, and offending someone is stealing their property, yeah. uh, which I would be offended too. Yeah, yeah you see, there's that. different types of offense. There's those verbal offenses, and then you know if you get something stolen from you, that's a little different offense. I don't think I want to be offended in a way that harms me. If I'm offended in a way that you know, because if I'm offended in a way that harms me, there's you hope your brother's life, there. There's more than likely a chance that I'm going to defend myself, and you are going to be also very much defended. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, on that note, I think it's important for us to live outside of our comfort zones, for us to be offended on a regular basis. And I think it's important for us to uh, gently and sometimes overtly uh, offend the people that are even closest to us in a way that they know that we respect and love them. But 
it's a way we can grow. And if you know there's a sensitive topic or subject, we need to push and prod the people we love and care about a little bit to kind of nudge them out of their unflexible mindset. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it doesn't, but well, I, think I think it's you important. Said the key word there is nudge. I think some people go full force and want to offend somebody, which I've been guilty of so many times of <laughs> me freight train, me give you all the information I have. You take it, all of it. <laughs> take but all of it now. You have to know little drips, you know, especially if it's somebody you respect and they have an idea that's completely different than yours and you need to offend them, but you have to do it in small drips. Like, let me gently offend them, but then give them a little call to action, a little out. All right, that offends you, but am I really wrong? I mean, I'm offended by what you said. Are you really right? Let's look it up. Let's really think about it together. And then if you do those little drips like, okay, well, tell me where I'm wrong. That offends you. Then why does it offend you? How does it offend you? Why does it offend you? Then please tell me your side of it. And if you can't tell me your side, then won't you be more open to listening? Maybe not at this point, but maybe later down the road of something else I might have to say. Maybe. You know, just push a little bit, a and, little bit. And then maybe by you being offended that they're not absorbing everything that you're saying, you will not throw the whole bucket on them. You'll just continue to drip. You know, <laughs> these are the things that I struggle with. I have to slowly, slowly drip. Slowly. Slow that freight train down. That's one of those things that think comes Stop. along with a little bit of uh, age and wisdom, a little seeing how things actually work in the real world and it doesn't just snap and happen. It's that one next step, that one next offense, those small ones that just add up over time that starts to get someone to think in the way right. that you want them to think. I, I think you brought something up that I don't know why this triggered this thought mm. that how so many people get offended. I'm sorry I triggered you. Yeah, oh, don't offend me, pal. Okay. <laughs> don't want any trouble. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, the idea that uh, our tax dollars fund the welfare system of the impoverished people of the country, how so many people get upset by that. And then uh, when you mention, well, corporate welfare is also a monstrosity and a, and a big problem that's even larger and more of a problem than what, what they're mostly upset about. When you hear about high taxes, oh, we got to pay for you know, these yahoos that aren't working, and you know you hear it all the time. And every and most of the time, whenever I hear it, I always say, well, "What about the corporate welfare?" And just it's like that thing that you say when you mention something that people don't ever think about. They just draw a blank and they just go, "Hey, I don't know. what do you think? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know any CEOs on welfare. Get out of here. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, you know, like sugar subsidies and corn subsidies and all. And just the list goes on forever. Well, here's one. If you can just put in your phone in Google and see how much a pound of beef would cost without government subsidies, it's much closer to $30 than it is to $3. Yeah, yeah I mean, there's just subsidies for everything. And, uh, and it makes a distorted environment that we have to trade for goods and services. And most people aren't even aware of it. And so... That is a, a frustration that is borderlines on being offensive to me. Uh, I know the more information that you learn and that you digest and you filter out for yourself and then you realize most people aren't uh, engaged in figuring out the world around them and figuring out themselves. Uh, there have been times where I struggle with not being a freight train, but being like wanting to pull my hair out especially with somebody that you're close with or know relatively well, you're like, what in the world is your problem? Like, what in the world is your problem? So the, I used to respect you. <laughs> I, well, ah, so, <laughs> the, it's funny. Uh, Jill, my wife, sent me something that was really hilarious. Uh, I was having a business meeting the other day, and uh, we were talking about Big Pharma. And a good friend of ours had his wife for 30 years has been steadily getting progressively worse in her health and steadily they have prescribed more and more and more medications to her where it's just a big huge bag he had ended up putting her in a home where they thought she was fixing to die and she said she got an epiphany from god god just came to her and said you need to stop all this right now or you're going to die and so she just stopped and this was in the recent, recent past. And now she is almost 100% better. 
where she was in a wheelchair. Now she's out running around playing with her kids and doing all kinds of stuff. And, uh, and that I was, when we started the conversation, I was thinking I'm about to be offensive to them because they were talking about medications and how some medications are beneficial. And the way the conversation was going, it was like, man, I really had some respect for these people, which then goes to whenever we're thinking of being offended or whether we're on the verge of being offended is like, you know, we probably should take a little step back, take a little break. We don't know exactly where that conversation's going. We don't need to just jump into conclusions. Let's hear them out first. Because when I heard them out, I was like, ah, oh, man, oh, I got to keep this friendship now. I, <laughs> I'm not offended. <laughs> this is great. I know exactly what you mean where you think somebody's going mm. down one path and you completely disagree with that line of thinking. You're like, oh my, how am I going to end this conversation without being thrown out of this place? Okay, well, I, I, forgot, I forgot I was uh, I threw Jill into that mix. We're sitting there having this conversation and then she talks about how now she's better and Big Pharma was uh, bad. Right in that moment, Jill texts me and said, uh, we had somebody uh, come in and she's taking memory medication, but she can't remember what, what it was. <laughs> I do that all the time. I got three bottles of ginkgo biloba and I can't remember where I put them. <laughs> Apparently it's working yeah, well. It was. It's working really well. Uh, it sounds like me with my cell phone. <laughs> oh my God. But that is the whole point of, you know, when we are becoming offended that we shouldn't just jump off into, you know, full on, oh, let me rev this train up. I'm fixing to run down the tracks so, on, you know, eh, let me just, let me listen to you for a minute. Let, let me uh, hear what you have to say before I feel like I need to get my manly juices flowing to start book. Bam! You know? <laughs> I think it's funny to look back on things like you mentioned 20 years ago, you know, Things that used to offend people 15, 20 years ago now don't even register on the offense meter. That's and, right. I mean, I, I think there was a show, I, I saw some preview for it, and I think it was about I Love Lucy, and she was pregnant, and they couldn't even say pregnant on TV. Like, it was this huge sin to even say she was pregnant, to be on television. And now... I'm thinking, what are the rules for television and movies and music? Elvis swinging his hips around on late night TV. And now we got Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion singing WAP. Yeah. Like, how has time <laughs> progressed? What were the things that are offending people now? What is going to be the next thing that's going to offend people? So I think getting Ooh. offended in this moment seems so ridiculous because... You don't know what's next. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, you, don't, you don't really know. Like the things that offend you now won't offend you later. That's right. one of the problems I have with like tattoos. When you mark your skin with something, like that's forever. So you may not you, like it later. You definitely won't. Like I have somebody that was close to me and they just turned 18 and they got a tattoo. And I was just trying to tell them before they did it, you know, you're 18 now. Think about 10 years ago, you were eight. Do you like any of the things you like when you were eight? <laughs> the answer is no. So in 10 years, do you really think you're going to have that much of an appreciation for things that you like now, 10 years later? That's a good Just point. like the offense thing. I mean, you, you don't know what's going to offend you. Mm. So we should all take a step back. Like, all right, this is upsetting me in this moment, but is this moment really going to be that important mm -hmm. even if it's one of those things like you just said i don't know i'm going to keep this friendship maybe you can just say well let's put some space in between us for now <laughs> until we both grow and maybe reconnect i don't think there's anything wrong with thinking of friendships as interweaving patterns like the norse people they used to think about that they had a web of weird and it was the strings of your life and other people's lives that wing and wind together and create this fabric that we call life and i just think well if you hit this time okay your threads crossed maybe you go back on this track or you go over here but at some point that person still was in your life so are you going to completely discount them and cut them out just for that one experience maybe they'll grow with you 
maybe it'll grow to their side a little bit. Maybe it's it's similar to uh, voting uh, that some people will say, oh, well, that I agree with this particular candidate on everything except abortion. So I or besides a tax increase or, you know, whatever the, but I agree with them on everything else and everything else, they'd be great, but not, not on that. Zia restarting the cameras. We had to, uh, you have to say, do I discount somebody altogether because I disagree with them and they offended me in this one line of thinking? I, I think it's hard for us to progress and come together better and work together cross-culturally uh, and di through different religions and thought, you know, belief systems, if we just go, oh, well, they believe this one way. I, 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 open space, pal. I don't want any, anything to do with you. Uh, I think that is a big mistake that humans too often make is that I'm going to discount you all together because you are fine person seem to be friendly enough to be around but oh you believe this one thing so that's a that offends me so screw off well it's like the old saying is you can't please all the people all the time i mean that's all my ex-girlfriends i couldn't please yeah. but anyway <laughs> point of the story was there's probably no one right person everybody's going to get offended everybody's going to agree everybody's going to choose their own path so yeah, and I think we should all be aware of that and not be so quick to discount people because we are either getting offended because like this story with my buddies talking about that uh, big pharma situation. You know, I was really starting to get feel that uh, aggression, that verbal uh, warfare that was about, I was like, how am I going to do this subtle art, uh, this little dance of verbal sword fighting here? And then all of a sudden I didn't have to because the conversation kept rolling in such a way that we were on the same page the whole time. This is pretty funny. <laughs> those are those good moments when you think there's going to be a conflict and it ends up not being a conflict, but that's not what always happens. No, for sure. More often than not, it's nonsense. Yes. Yeah, probably <laughs> so. yeah. And some people you have to realize you just can't talk to and they may be offending you and there is no way to get to a middle uh, ground or even a conversation where you know 100% for certain that they're wrong. But you don't want to just blast them out of the water. You want to give them some respect. And so you have to talk to them in a way that is convincing and tell them knowledge, give them information. But if they're not willing to receive or even talk to you about it, they're closed off, well, there's nothing else to be done. You, you have to realize that all right, well, I still like you. We can talk about something else or do something else together. We just won't deal with this. And over time, if it's available, I'll do that famous tray drip. i just dri dri drip, drip it right on you. At time. There it is. <laughs> oh, I like how that's now the famous yeah. tray drip. Tray has got to drip. <laughs> Look out, Rick Flair. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but the, the tray drip is good. It's not like, you know, gonorrhea. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, it's a positive tray drip. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, that was a fantastic talk that I think everybody should really take into consideration that uh, it is good to be offended. It is good to still remain calm and cool while you're being offended. Well, I think the more you get offended, the more calm and cool that you can become because you never put yourself in those situations and circumstances just like anybody that plays any sport or any hobby if you don't practice that sport or hobby when it comes game time you're not going to be very efficient no matter how much skill that you may possess if anything else you can still have the skills and you can have all the language that you can use all the verbiage all the vocabulary to change that person's mind but if you get upset and start yelling and you completely lose your cool, all those tools that you've worked and honed on for months or years no. or everything, it's gone. So you have to realize not just that it's okay to get offended, but you should put yourself in situations to get offended. To because practice. Yeah, to practice. If nothing else, it's a practice. Yeah, definitely for because sure. Because I guarantee you, no matter what you do for a living, no matter where you're at in life, where you live, you will be offended. And it'll probably happen 
Now. <laughs> That's exactly right. Well, yes, well one thing that it, uh, we didn't touch on in this conversation was the importance. You, you did just barely. But we live in this cancel culture where because everybody's offensive and then, of course, uh, uh, people with different agendas want to cancel out uh, other valuable information or even if it's not valuable, who cares? People are canceling everybody everywhere and censorship is run amok. And with that being the case, I think we should all be glad we're being offended and celebrate the notion and the idea that we should allow people to speak. We don't necessarily have to, like I said earlier, we don't have to watch everything. We don't have to listen to everybody. We can do it in our own time. But everybody, that's why it's the First Amendment, freedom of speech. You get to boil down to the truth. You know, I think being offended adds a little spice to life. Sometimes I like to think of people, and when you said multicultural, sometimes I like to think of food. You know, if you're always eating this bland food that you always prepare, it's, it's boring, but sometimes you go get some Thai food and it starts burning your tongue. That's when you know you're living, baby. Uh, that's you're right. Really offended about, yeah. Yes, I mean, that's exactly what it is. The peppers are offending your tongue. It's not something they're used to. But that shock, that something different, is what makes it great. You don't want to keep having the same conversations over and over. That's what makes life boring. I think to so go too. out there and spice it up, to get offended, to live life, to see where you stand on a position, to see how your preparation that you work on mentally. Yeah. Or, 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 you know, you've had a couple of relationships, as we all have. How are these, uh, like, like when you... Like we mentioned last uh, video, which all of y'all should go watch too, by the way, it's awesome. When you tell somebody, I, I want to, uh, let's have a date, but you know, you, you can't be a drama queen. Has that ever offended anybody? Or did you get away with it pretty good? I get away with it pretty good. Because you're, cause you're, <laughs> you're so sweet and cute. <laughs> about my eyelashes and everything. You know? Oh, yeah. Speaking of sweet and cute, I'm playing. I had some Yahoo uh, that was offensive to me uh, on a comment. I forget, you know, because we're everywhere. We're on YouTube, Bitch, you Rumble, Odyssey, everywhere. They saw Churchill behind behind me, and they didn't obviously listen to the uh, talk at all, but they uh, went on this diatribe about how we're just a bunch of... Uh, faggoty douchebags and that was their verbiage you know that kind so of the guy does know you oh, oh damn it <laughs> <laughs> or you offended it. Yeah. yeah well i started like i instantly went what a dumbass you know like you start to get that aggressive you know like what are you talking about and then i started laughing i was like well he doesn't know anything he doesn't know me he doesn't know why i have churchill behind me uh well one time i thought he was great then i come to find out uh I don't think he was so great. Now it's a reminder of I don't know everything I, I think I know. Well, also, you don't have to like someone to respect them. There's people that I don't have much liking for at all, but I do respect them. Like John D. Rockefeller, I used to like him as a child. I do not like him very much anymore, but do you? I can't not respect him. What he did was impressive. He is a person that is worthy oh, yeah. of respect. They're, they're impressed. They're impressive, but they're just prime evil. And it was, it's just funny when we're talking about being offended that I got a, I started to get offended and caught myself yeah. because some Yahoo is talking about, <clears throat> you know, we're Anglo, so whatever the hell he was saying. I was like, oh, God, man. Dude, we were talking about love. Like, how do you express love? Mm. And then you go off on a tangent about that. It's because it? you didn't put your, your admin uh, verbs, how you describe yourself. Uh, into yeah, golly. I, I actually thought that was uh, Benny Hill. For <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> that was fantastic. Well, everybody, thank you all for joining us. You, you know you can find us everywhere, like uh, Odyssey, BitChute, Rumble. And our website, mysticsoftexas.com. Hope everyone enjoyed the conversation out there. Have a good day.